Look at that view. That's nice. We're here in Cape Breton Island. Right, Diesel? We made a wrong turn. We just went past our uh, exit to the Trans Canada. Just finished editing yesterday's vlog here, and look at this. Look at this. I just clicked render or export. Like 13 minutes and it'll be done. That used to take like two and a half, three hours with my old computer and my old program, Sony Vegas. Now I'm using Adobe Premiere. It's just so much better, so much better. I really like it, highly recommend it. So now that I've got yesterday's work all done, all I've gotta do is put this vlog together today once I'm done, and that's it. It's been really nice, really nice having having the weekends off sort of. Uh, this has been a bit of a longer trip. I've been gone for what, about two weeks now already. It's gonna turn out to be a three week trip, a longer one. Um, but I am looking forward to getting home, seeing everybody again, seeing Brett. Do you guys miss her in the vlogs? I miss including her in the vlogs a little bit, and I was talking to her about this yesterday. It was, I thought it was getting a little confusing for everybody, hopping between my truck here and then what she's doing back home. Uh, so we figured maybe it's best just to keep it the way it is or the way it was with trucking here on the road. What do you guys think uh, of including some days from uh, what Britt's doing at home. Britt's my girlfriend, if you guys don't know that yet. Uh, she's gonna be coming on the on the road with me sometime soon. That'll be a lot of fun. And uh, so she'll be in the vlogs every day then. I'm looking forward to having her back in the vlogs again. So it's not just my ugly face in here every day. I mean, Diesel's the one that's holding everything together here. His, his, his handsome face is what's keeping you guys here, and I realize that. It's nothing to do with me. So once she's in here, you guys will have a reason to watch again. We are on our way up to Sydney, Nova Scotia from New Glasgow. Uh, we've delivered our freight from this morning already. So I got one more piece left on my trailer. And then this load has been fully delivered, mission accomplished. The only thing is, once we get to Sydney, They'll be closed, and they won't be open again until Monday, so I need to reset my logs anyway. So that's not a bad thing. So we're going to sit up there in Sydney, Nova Scotia for the weekend, and uh, try to find us something to do. I've been looking on Google of places to park around there. I don't see any truck stops, but I do see a Walmart with a very large back area, I guess you'd say, behind Walmart. So. It's a small town. Usually small towns don't have a problem with you parking like out of the way behind Walmart and department stores and stuff. But I'll wait and see. I'll wait and see. Anyways, here we are, Nova Scotia. Looks like the scale is closed here. We're about to go over this land bridge into, uh, oh, I always forget what this area is called. What is the area called in Nova, Nova Scotia? It's like an island, something island. Anyways, you'll see on the signs. You'll see on the signs. nice we're here in Cape Breton Island right diesel we made a wrong turn we just went past our uh, exit to the Trans Canada it's not a big deal it's just a little roundabout thing I hate roundabouts how many times I gotta say that hey Ron I took the wrong exit on the roundabout and I went into Cape Breton I don't know I, I'm on this little thingy here I'm gonna turn around right here I have enough room but I just had to stop and show you that view just incredible Nova Scotia is very beautiful just look at that. Imagine living here. It's getting a little cold right now, but summers here are amazing. 
Ready? crazy this world is crazy I drove past the college today and yelled boo 15 people went to the hospital 734 need counseling and classes are canceled for a week regardless of what side you're on and who you voted for I think we can all agree that there's a lot of college campuses and university campuses around not just not just North America but the world, like the Western world, that are not exactly helping our young people to grow up. They're sort of, you know, keeping them in the cradle almost, encouraging them to lash out like babies, canceling classes and canceling midterm exams because of an election. They have They've, they've labeled this post-election stress disorder, and there are counseling classes available for those affected. Are you freaking kidding me? We're doomed. We're doomed. Man, if these kids don't grow up and experience the real world and realize that they're absolutely insane, this world is gonna go in a very dark direction one day. 20 years from now when these kids are in government and running the country like it's scary if you need a time out and a safe space after an election in a democratic society I'm sorry but there's something wrong with you that is not normal that is not normal this is a democracy all right I live in one of those things too I voted we had our voting last year, and you know what? My team lost. You know what I did? I got back in my truck and went back to work, and I'm gonna be back in 2019 to vote again. And I protest on social media. I didn't go out. Then again, if I go out and protest and break stuff, I'll lose my job too. There's that thing too, you know, I got a job to keep. But I didn't need a safe space. Even though I thought that the, the results of our election here in Canada were going to be devastating for the Canadian economy, devastating for Canadian culture and identity, I, I didn't need a safe space. Maybe I'm just a little more grown up. I don't know. What is going on on our college and university campuses? It's like this, uh, it's a dangerous, dangerous Marxist ideology being pumped down into them from kindergarten all the way through college that's completely anti-western anti-canadian anti-american anti-british anti-european anti-german wherever you're from it seems like it's just infected everywhere the young generation anyways enough of that i wanted to get that off my chest because i know the majority of you agree with me regardless of if you voted for Hillary or you voted for Trump. Regardless in Canada, if you voted for Harper or you voted for Trudeau, I think we can all agree that our college campuses are a mess with a bunch of millennial babies. I'm a millennial, okay, I am. I was born in 88, that puts me in the millennial category. I'm not very proud of that. But, uh, or I should say I'm proud of, I'm not proud of what my generation is doing. Like this is what you get when you get a bunch of undisciplined children who grow up to be adults. We did this. It's not exactly their fault. It's in part 
the people in society and that raised them to be like this. They were taught to act like this. They didn't just wake up and, you know, suddenly one generation comes along and suddenly like, oh, we're going to go against everything our nations have stood for for thousands of years. We're just going to change everything. No, they were taught and groomed to do this by a select few people in education. Man, when I have kids, I'm going to tell you something. When I have children, I am going to be very, very careful who I allow to influence their education and their life. I will. I was put through private school because my parents wanted a, a, a better education for me too. <coughs> and they didn't want me indoctrinated. When my family and my people, whatever, moved and made the, made the journey to the new world, when they moved here, they were promised by the government that education would stay at a local level to prevent exactly what's happening today. They wanted education to be controlled by the municipality or by the province or state. That way, if you disagreed with what your kids were being taught in a certain municipality or province or state, you can move and put them in schools in the next state over, which maybe might align more with your ideologies. Instead of running education down from a big government centralized view, you know, where the government dictates to the entire country exactly how your children should be taught, this is what the dangers of it is, because now the federal government has okayed this education to trickle down to all of our kids who are now in university trying to get into the workforce and they've grown up in a nanny state and they're all indoctrinated with one ideology, one way of thinking. Very Marxist, by the way. Education was promised to be at a local level. When we moved here, at least when my mom's family moved here, it took them 26 years to break that promise and take education to a federal level. When that happened, a lot of my family left. Half of them went to Paraguay, half of them went to Mexico. That's why my dad is Paraguayan, he was born in Paraguay, and my mom is Mexican. She was born in Mexico because we fled Canada, because they broke their promise to us. They took education away from the provinces and the state, and they made it federal. This is exactly why they were afraid of that happening. Because now we have a federal government dictating to everybody how they should think, how they should act. They want to raise your children for you. They don't want you to have any control over how your children are educated. My parents, that's one big reason I believe why my parents put me through private school was because the federal government broke their promise a long time ago already, almost 100 years ago already. And so we said, no, we're not going to listen to you. We're going to educate them the way we want them to be educated. And I want to do that for my kids too. Because my kids are not going to grow up throwing a temper tantrum when they lose an election. They are not going to grow up getting trophies when they lose. They're going to be taught how to lose like a gentleman or like a lady. How to accept defeat and give it your all to win next time. There's millions and millions of these millennials around Canada around the United States and around Europe and the United Kingdom that have not been taught how to lose. And it's driving me nuts. Offended by everything. You need a safe space, really? Really? In the night, in the early 20th century, there were 18 year olds marching off into battle with bullets flying past their head just so that you could have free democratic elections and freedom in every other way, shape, shape and form. And now, 18 year olds nowadays, you need a safe space when someone insults you on Facebook? You need a safe space when you lose, when your preferred candidate loses an election? You need a safe space? You know, sometimes I think, now don't take this the wrong way, sometimes I think a war would do our generation good. I don't want war, let's be clear about that. But. If these kids had to go out there and face what the kids of the past had to face, maybe they would start to understand why things are the way they are. Like, 
that's my rant for the day. That's my rant. I know I cut a whole bunch of it out of there because I, I was really long-winded again, but you know, there's so many YouTubers out here that are afraid to voice their opinions because of the backlash. People, people will leave and unsubscribe because they disagree with me. No, people who disagree with me on my channel, I believe, are a little more mature than that. They'll see my point of view. And they'll understand it. Beautiful, beautiful countryside. Beautiful. 70, 70. It doesn't say kilometers an hour. Don't you think that might mean miles an hour? What if people get confused? I always wonder about that. When Americans come to Canada for the very first time, and maybe they're not aware that we use metric, and they, they see our speed limit signs that say maximum 110. I wonder how many of them think that we're talking miles an hour and like I, I know I've heard of it before I've heard cops talk about it before where they pull over an American and it's their first time in Canada and they're doing hundred miles an hour down the highway <laughs> uh, and they probably just cross the border like wow this is awesome you can go so this is like the Autobahn man not quite nope no uh, 100 kilometers an hour that's uh, 60 miles an hour there friend uh, you can't blame them. You can't. We'll, we'll laugh at them a little bit, a little bit. You can't really blame them. Speaking of cops, we have an RCMP guy right here. What do you want, guy? Why are you turning around? Why are you turning around? You make me nervous when you do that. I hate that when they turn around right in front of you, then it looks like they're going to pull out behind you and pull you over. Uh, he stayed back there. He stayed back there. Like, what did I do? What makes me so nervous there? So we're going through a uh, small town here. I believe this is a reserve here in Nova Scotia. Indian Reserve. The First Peoples Reserve, First Nations Reserve, Aboriginal Reserve. I don't know what to call them really. They have like 10 different names. And I don't know which one is the politically correct one to use right now. So, uh... We'll just call it the reserve. We're going through. It's very nice. Very nice. It's like a little town. Just like any other little town. They don't pay taxes here though. Uh, if you get if you're lucky enough to be born into a, onto a reserve, uh, you don't have to pay taxes. It's very nice. You also get your education for free. If you want to become a doctor, go ahead. You know, it's, it's an equal society. Canada's all about equality. So we're going to keep going down the road here towards Sydney, Nova Scotia. Oh, we're about, yeah, about an hour away or so. About an hour away. And it's right in the, sort of like the northern tip almost, the northern part of Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is almost an island. If you look at it on a map, there's just a small little piece of land that connects it to New Brunswick. They're very connected to... Uh, what would you say? The marine lifestyle, the, the ocean, that's why they call it the Maritimes. A lot of lobster around here, a lot of fishing, a lot of seafood. And they all paint their houses bright colors. You notice that? Most of them. Okay, maybe not these ones right here. A lot of them paint them like there's a bright red one there. Some of them do bright yellow, bright purple. <sighs> Excuse me. But uh, it's very unique. I like it. I really do. It's very nice out here. We're getting close to North Sydney, Nova Scotia. Now, if you remember, this is where we board the ferry to go to Newfoundland. I've never actually delivered to this area. Uh, the only reason I've always ever been here before is to board the ferry. So now we'll be able to see it, but we're not actually going on it. After I deliver this last piece on my trailer on Monday morning, we head to Moncton, New Brunswick. From there, who knows? Could be the southern states, could be Ontario, could be Quebec, uh, I don't know. I'm guessing it'll be either south or, or west. I've actually called ahead to a motel here in town. Uh, there's no truck stops that I know of around here where I can do laundry and get a shower. And I wanna get out of this truck. I've been in this truck for two and a half weeks now. I want to sleep in a bed, stretch out, watch some TV, have a shower in my own room and stuff. So called ahead to the, the motel here in town and I'm about to check in.
Coming into town here, I'm following another driver who's clearly getting paid by the hour. It's always nice to run into them on the two-lane road. There we go, here we go, getting into town. I've never been this far into Sydney before. Oh, I hate this one, I gotta merge to the right. That's my blind side. Alright, here we go. There we go. Okay, we did it, we did it. We gotta find our hotel now. Continue 2.4 kilometers to 560 Kings Road, on left. I believe it's called the Heritage Inn. I'll have to double check it. It's like a, a middle class or whatever, middle middle scale hotel. It's not like the Ritz or not like a thousand dollars a night. And it's also more than $50 a night. So it's not at the bottom of the barrel either. Well, right in the middle. Oh, we got a Walmart over there to our left. Oh, good, good. We might make a visit to there tomorrow, eh, Diesel? McDonald's to the right. Oh, we're in heaven. All right, careful, Diesel, and slowing down. Why well, you shouldn't stand on your chair. Now they said there's truck parking there and that I can get in there and turn around and whatnot and park conveniently or something like that. I don't always trust that. Very often when I call a hotel or whatever, if I'm staying at a hotel and they say, oh yeah, we have truck parking, come on in. I get there and it's like, you can hardly get the, the short school bus in there, you know? We'll see what happens, I'm a little nervous. But because Google Earth, is a, I think it's a newer hotel, so Google Earth doesn't even have it on their map yet. So I couldn't even take a look at what, it, what it'll take to get in there. Oh, we still got a mile to go yet. 1.6 kilometers, okay. And I got everything here. We're the northern tip of Nova Scotia here. There's Timmy's off to the left. God bless you, Timmy. I know I'm going to pass by. I know, I, there's nowhere to park here. Maybe we'll go walk there later on, get a coffee later, eh, Diesel? It's only a kilometer, a kilometer and a half, a mile, a mile walk, a mile here, a mile back. It's a good walk. We'll see. Not promising anything. Off to our left is the water. That water leads out to the ocean. That is ocean water right there. I believe we're in like a bay here. Long history a lot of history here tell you what Sydney is a lot bigger than I thought it was oh here it is here it is it's no not heritage in Heatherstone in no Hearthstone Hearth Hearthstone in now how do I get in there where's their driveway that's not it right off on the left that blue sign they got an indoor Arriving pool at 560 Ooh. Kings Road now they on say that. they got lots of room for trucks you think they're lying or do you think they're they don't know what they're talking about Oh, this, this guy's gonna let me through here. Nice of him, he didn't have to do that. Please drive to highlighted route. Okay, so this is the, the hotel here off to the left here, right here. Okay, they better have room for me to turn around in the back or I've got to back right out into traffic. I'm going off their word here and that's dangerous. Looks like a decent place, you know, like, We'll see what happens. Oh yeah, lots of room down here. Finally, a hotel that doesn't lie to me. Not a lot of room, but decent amount. I think I'm gonna back in against the left there. Okay. Let's do this. This will be fun. There we go. Got ourselves turned around. Off to the side here. And that's the motel. Decent. I like the indoor pool idea. I don't even know if I have my trunks along. I bet you I didn't even bring my trunks. That'd be just like me. Well, here I am, showered up in the hotel room. I've got two beds in here. One for me, one for Diesel. But you're not allowed on the bed, okay, Diesel? That's my rule. These are white blankets. I don't want them all full of your hair. Okay, you stay on the ground. I won't let them on the bed here. It's not my place. So this is the room. It's pretty decent. Got the sink in here, bathroom in there shower in there just like any other hotel room really and two beds oh and there is that beautiful shot again just on to Cape Breton Island wow such a beautiful place out here in Nova Scotia on the east coast of Canada we're in Atlantic time zone here so this is one time zone further east from eastern time zone in the states so I'm way out here way as far east almost as far east as I can I could go 
to Newfoundland yet. And I've been there quite a few times, but we're not going there on this trip. Not as far as I know. But yeah, and now we're here in the, in the motel room. I got Harry Potter playing on the TV here right now. Just muted it for this voiceover. Uh, it's the Goblet of Fire, so he's like fighting dragons now or something. Very, very, very entertaining. Oh, oh, he almost got him. Oh, did he win? Oh, they're not in the arena anymore. Oh, man, intense. Where did Harry go? Oh, they're all wondering. Okay, anyway, back to the vlog here. Thanks for watching today. I make a new vlog every day. If you want to see another one tomorrow, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the YouTube page so you don't miss it. Hit that like button. If you did like the vlog, this vlog was quite a bit longer than usual, about 25 minutes here. Hey, for once, I actually did a decently, a decent length of one. Oh, Harry's back in the arena now. Oh, 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 he's, oh, oh, he's got the golden egg. Oh my. Way to go, Harry. Way to go. Everybody's clapping. Diesel, clap. Everybody's clapping on the movie. Everybody's clapping. Here, let's turn the mute off here. <laughs> All right, let's end this vlog. I will see you tomorrow.